Where's she going? Come on, dear. There you go. With three kids, two kids on there. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another fantastic afternoon on planet Earth. I'm going to get me massage done. I found another place. Uh, I'm a bit worried though, I've looked at all the photos, I've all got the uniforms on, I can see a certificate in the window, but I'm a bit, I'm still a bit worried because it's close to Soibacow and things happen in Soibacow. But this is right at the very end of a street and I've looked at the reviews, the Google reviews, which are all in Thai, and apparently they're very good. Medical massage. So it's 25 past 5, it's 31 degrees, I'm going to go and get my massage done. Uh, it's 34 minutes according to Google, but it probably isn't because I'm on a scooter. So, here we go! I'm getting on that one now, and I haven't been hanging around recently. I'm getting 30.6 uh, mile uh, kilometres to the litre. Now, the, the quoted figures from Honda was something like about 28. I've never seen it go down that low. I don't know why, I, mean, I just feel in such, such a good mood. Recently, I, my mood has been getting something like it, it's never been before. It's quite weird. I've been a person who has worried about money and everything all my life. But since I got off that plane, I don't care about anything. Now, I haven't got an endless amount of funds to keep going over here, and, and I'm probably going to run out in around about six months' time. But I am not going back to England. I will not go back to England. That is the, the, the one thing that I'll say is I'm not going back to England. I want to stay in Thailand. I want to live here. And I'm, it's, it's, I can't explain the feeling. And everybody who comes over here and they try to explain what it's like to other people, it's completely different when you get over here. And I think for the first thing, the first time in my life, I'm not worried about anything at all. Nothing matters. I, I just love everything about Thailand. I can't explain the feeling that it gives you, the feeling of freedom, the feeling of total calm in a world of chaos. Go, 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 go! <laughs> so when you're riding on the roads, if you divide each lane up into three, you've got the left, the middle and the right of the lane. As long as you stick in your third of the lane, you are perfectly safe. They'll come out on the outside of you, they'll, they'll, they're absolute maniacs sometimes, and they'll cut you up but they won't knock you off. You know, I'm sure this place is England in the 80s. That's, to me, what it feels like, the freedom that you used to have. To do what you want to do, as long as you know what the risks are, you know the risks and you know the consequences of your actions. One, two, three, four, five, five up. Go, go, go! <laughs> I love it. Absolutely love it. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Ooh. Also, I need to tell you about the uh, about road use, um, the safety sort of factor side of it, because yes, the death rate in Thailand is, is incredibly high. It's one of the highest in the world. Um, but if you follow the rules, although there are no rules, if you follow the basic principle of Number one, you've got three lanes, which is actually one lane, so you split each lane into three, and you stick in that lane, you stick in that piece of lane, you're perfectly safe. They'll come on the outside of you, they'll come left, right, they'll go, they'll go so close to you, you won't believe it, but they won't run into you. And, and I think that is one of the problems, is people think, oh my god, that was close, slam your brakes on, or swerve, or something like that, and, and then you're off. Uh, traffic lights as well. Uh, when you're coming up to... Um, traffic lights don't go through on red because they'll have you because you see that place there that's a police station and they sit in there and they watch they're out there with the scooter sitting outside and they'll watch it and if, if you go over it 
you're, you're stuffed. The fine can be quite heavy, so you've got to beware. And also, this white line here, the imaginary white line, white line. Don't go over that white line. Always stick in these boxes here. These green boxes are for scooters. So, don't go over the white line. Now, you can turn left on red, although nobody seems to know which traffic lights you can turn left on red. Oh yeah, that one says turn left through. And these lights here, oh, the countdown's there. They seem to know, even though the lights are on red. I'm going to hang back a bit. If in doubt, hang back. Don't go trying to keep up with them because you just won't. They've got no life to live for. <laughs> Sometimes you think, well, even I think, oh, I don't believe what I've just seen. Bloody hell. Oh dear. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, and he's overtaking on a plot of bit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh f shit. Fuck. Stop it, Tony. What you've got to think about is everything in Thailand is legal until you get caught. That, that's the way that it seems to me because nobody seems to know what the rules of the road are, what the laws are, nothing. No one's got a firm idea of what you're supposed to do in certain circumstances. And also, um, shoulder checks. Always shoulder check. And always keep a third of your, your mind, keep two thirds on the road ahead and then a third of your mind just scanning, quickly flicking into the mirrors. And you can get a good idea of what's around you at the time. And you can keep that in your mind so as you can make quicker manoeuvres if you need to. And like I've always said to you before, I keep two fingers on the brakes. Because that millisecond over here that it takes for you to take your hands off the bars and put your hands on the fingers, your fingers on the bars, uh, brakes, that's the one, is critical, believe me. Keeping your third of the lane, keep scanning your mirrors, a third of the time, two thirds of the time on the road and a third of the time flicking through the mirrors all the time to see what's behind so as you can do manoeuvres if you need to. I'm going. And keep two fingers on the brakes. If you can, if you can ride like that. It becomes second nature. To me it's like a, it's like wearing a seatbelt. You know, you, you, you've got to keep your fingers on the brakes. So this ADV is, it's, it's no good in traffic because it's got a, the null point on it is terrible by which I mean when you open the throttle there is a point where uh, it grabs because it's centrifugal clutch there's got to be a point where it stops grabbing then it grabs now trying to get that right on these things in the traffic is an absolute nightmare it's a big heavy thing, you know, trying to weave 186 kilo through traffic like this is, is a bloody feat in itself. If I sit right the way forwards, then I can flick it in and out of traffic a lot, lot better than just sitting back and relaxing. We've got to turn right. It's bloody manic, look. <laughs> it's absolute chaos. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> shit, shit. Shit, go, 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 go. This is Soibaker, I think. Yes, it is. Oh, shit, you know. It's a bit busy tonight. Ladyboy, look. Ladyboy. Absolutely, definitely, Ladyboy. <laughs> Bloody hell. That's actually stereotypical Ladyboy, I think. This is a one-way street. <laughs> yeah, I just tried to go the wrong way up a wrong one, 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 one way street. Yeah, that ain't gonna work, is it? I'm lost for words. All I can say is that the most sensual, sensual massage 
I have ever had. It wasn't a proper, like, a medical sort of massage, you know. I highly recommend going to see my friend, so, um, Sao, that was the name. S-A-U her name is. I'm going to try and, try and explain something with, with Thai women. Um, when you get to know them, well, no, you, you never get to know them. But when you get to, um, when you've seen them a few times sort of thing, you can 100% trust them. Now, th there is a caveat to that. It, it, uh, trust in the respect of, if I was to give Sao my wallet, you know, I could guarantee that that wallet will come back with exactly the, the same amount of money and everything else that I left it with. They will not steal off you. They do that for a reason, you know, they, they gain your trust because they need things, they need money, they, they want money, they want you to give them, give them more. And if you don't trust them, you're not going to give them any money, so, you know, they have to gain your trust and they have to gain your, um, I suppose, your respect. Where's well, nice to look at at night? Soy 6. I'm going to try and go down Soy 6. I'll have to go up Soy 6 1, which is commonly known as Ladyboy Street, and hope I don't get accosted. And then I'll go back down because Soy 6 is actually a one way street and it's one way going this way. Rain. This is Soy 6 1, which is Ladyboy Street. Which is a one-way street, as you can tell. Oof. My, they were quite actually lady for lady boys. They were quite nice. My stomach is making some right weird feelings. Um, I think something's going to happen. That was a lady boy. I think something's going to happen. Yeah, lady boys. There's another one. That's another one. I can sort of tell by the bloke's voice. You see, people think that, you know, it's all about ladyboys. That's all you go, go there for. And uh, Well, that's up to you, son. If you want to do that sort of thing, if that's the first thing that comes into your mind about Thailand is ladyboys, Evidently, it's something that you need to explore yourself, not me. So, we'll go down here now. Welcome to Soy 6.
Some people might look down on it that the, the goes are working girls, they're, they're basically bar girls, in fact they are just bar girls. Uh, some people might look down on that and, and think, you know, it's it's just wrong. Well, that's that's what they've been brought up to understand, you know, from a pretty young age of that's the way to make money. And if that's the way you make money, that's what you have to do. And just so as you know, prostitution is actually illegal in Thailand, but they don't class it as, as, as that sort of thing. And I hate the word, I hate that word. They're not that. They're just working girls, they're just trying to earn a living, you know? They just, just want, they need money like everybody else. And do they enjoy it? Well, it gives them money. So, to an extent, yes, they do enjoy it because anything that gives them money brings um, brings happiness with it. Do they want to do it? No, probably not. You know, why would you? Turn the tables and a 60 year old woman and a, and a 20 year old bloke, what are you going to do? You know, you, you, you wouldn't enjoy it. So no, I don't think they do enjoy it. Although they shout out, handsome man, handsome man, to average absolutely everybody going past. That in front of us is walking street which they block off at about 8 o'clock. It's got some of the best, best nightclubs that I have ever seen in my life. And the amount of go-go bars that you've got in there, which no one seems to understand, but you don't need to understand it, is absolutely unreal. The nightlife down there is just incredible. You've got to be careful with things like sitting at traffic lights because I don't know if you can see over the road there, it says Pattaya Police. And there's going to be a copper sitting in there watching for Mr. Farang just to pop his um, front wheel over the white line and then he'll find you. You will never win arguing with police. Now, I, I can tell you that from past experience. I went over the white line because there was a bar bus in front of me and he slammed his anchors on and I had to stop just over the white line and he said white line pay fine uh, at, at first he said uh, one million baht which I thought was a bit, a bit expensive you know it's a bit steep and then I knocked him down to a thousand the bar buses as they're called as a general rule of thumb, what, what they do is they have they have a set route that they just keep going round and round and round and round and they're picking people up and dropping them off all the way round. Now you get on there, uh, you don't ask them how much first because they'll give you a stupid price. You get on there 
and then you get off where you need to and you pay 10 baht for it generally it doesn't it doesn't really matter where you get on it doesn't really matter where you get off it's 10 baht soon as we've been down soy six i'll talk about bar girls a bit now there's basically two types of bar girls in the bars you've got the ones on retainer and you've got the sort of freelance ones they're all freelance really but the ones on retainer are basically paid by the bar to keep them there because they're good for business they're usually the either very very good looking ones or the ones who really know how to um, work the punters should we say the other ones aren't paid to be there it's whatever they get off drinks or whatever else you know now you've got two types of drink you've got a normal drink which is what you drink and then you've got the lady drink and the lady drink can come in various different size bottles and sorry uh, glasses and stuff like that so we'll say for instance you're sitting down and you see a girl that you like and you just do the the normal sort of a you know a blah, 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 to her and she'll come over to you and she'll get a drink she'll get you a drink and then she'll sit there and she'll try and communicate with you but who needs to communicate well if she's still got a drink she'll sit there and she'll talk to you and then you say you know do you want another one and then she'll take your bin uh, which is basically got your receipt in it and then she'll go and get another drink and that's the way that it works now if you want to take that girl back you just say to her boom boom or or, or bar fine you know whatever it doesn't matter and then she'll take your bin uh, with all your drinks on it and everything else and she'll uh, go up to the bar and she'll get a total for you including the bar farm which is generally around about 700 baht ish, -ish sort of area uh, that, basically that's because you're fine for taking the, the girl out of the bar because it's less business for them so you have to pay the fine that's the way it goes that's the way it works and that's the thing you have to pay so after you've paid your bill and you've paid you know you paid the bar fine and everything else well you, you agree a price which generally is between a thousand two thousand baht it all depends about the girl what she's like and blah 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 and then you either take her back to your place or you uh, go to a place that she's got set up for you you do the business you pay the money and you leave and that's the end of it but please 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 do not get involved with the bar girl it just will not work they to them it's money everything is money it's all a contract between two people if you keep giving her money she'll keep coming back basically and she'll love you to the ends of the earth she'll th you'll th you'll feel so special while you're with her she will make you feel like an absolute god because that's what they do that's their job and you can't blame them you really can't blame them they get, they make a lot of money off this they make a lot more money than than, than working in the fields or, or i was talking to one of the bar girls who was a really really good talker she really did know how to work people and she was getting round right about two and a half um, two and a half grand a month that's two and a half thousand pounds a month off doing bar work and she never used to take customers back she couldn't stand doing that so all she did was live off drinks and tips so I hope this has been an informative video for you and, and if it has please hit the like button please hit the share button share it with the world share it with everybody everybody because I'm going to be bankrupt soon and I don't <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do and I don't care I don't care at all anyway ladies and gentlemen I'm going to love you and leave you and I'll catch you next time I'd like you to remember that life is definitely worth living on this measly earth all you've got to do is get out there do what makes you happy do what makes you smile and bollocks to what anybody else thinks you're on the wrong side of the road love you need to get over this side to go this way